the day has finally come. I've been sitting on this review a little bit because it's been one of the hardest reviews I have ever put together. This is the Sig Cross. It is supposedly the next generation of the bolt action hunting rifle. This one chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. I've been shooting it a lot over the last couple months and I can't decide. <laughs> Here's why the review is so difficult. My opinion here differs quite a bit than some of the other reviews on the internet that have been done about the Sig Cross. And so it's kind of made myself second guess myself a little bit. Um, and there are so many things that are non-traditional that it's been hard to formulate my thoughts. So rather than this being a polished presentation in this video, I'm more just gonna tell you everything that I saw and you can be the judge what you think of this gun. So first of all, what exactly is it? The reason that this gun is unique is, I mean, to an untrained eye, you just says, oh, it's like an AR style gun for hunting. Uh, but this is actually just a traditional bolt action hunting rifle. And then I hear people say, oh, it's a chassis gun. It's not a chassis at all. This is a one piece receiver here. And that's really what is one of the defining characteristics that makes this unique to a hunting rifle. And that eliminates a lot of issues where misalignments can be entered in, as well as no need for worrying about bedding and things like that. It just, the design of it makes it more accurate, less prone to error, at least we need to say. Um, then we have a fully adjustable uh, stock on here, which is beautiful. It's so nice. I shoot this gun with my kids all the time and my 10 year old collapses everything down and then I can just quickly make the adjustments and, and pull out the butt pad. Um, or I can lift the, the cheek piece here. It's really cool. Plus the packability. We travel a lot for hunts. In fact, I'm gonna take you guys on hunts this year to South Africa, uh, start of September, and in uh, black-tailed deer in, on Kodiak Island in Alaska, second week in November. Uh, so we got some cool hunts going on, and boy, to be able to collapse this stock and bring it with you is really cool. Now, we'll talk about this later, but it's kind of a pain to collapse. You have to kind of push up while you press the button uh, to push it over, but it is really nice. And it's unique that it has just an 18 inch barrel for 6.5 Creedmoor or 16 inch for 308. So it's just such a little light packable gun. That's really what makes this gun unique. So that's what it is. Is it any good now is the next question. Well, let's talk about accuracy. The gun is picky with ammo. So when I saw the review from the Military Arms channel, which is a fantastic channel, I definitely love the information and, and uh, respect everything that they do over there. But they really dinged this gun for accuracy. And uh, there was a repeated uh, reference to this is not a precision rifle. It's, I no, I don't think it is. I don't know if it's exactly marketed as that either though. This is a hunting rifle. And as a hunting rifle, I think the accuracy is quite good. Um, I mean, look at that. That's a 0.4 inch group. That is a point, oh, sorry, that is a 0.6 inch group. And now that is a 1.04 inch group as well. What I found is that it's ammo picky, but very accurate, at least the copy that I have here. So. If you're, I had to try several different loads and some of them I just, the best groups I was getting was like 1.1 inches. It just wasn't, not terrible, but, and I didn't see weird flyers and stuff, but just not quite where we'd wanna be. But when you find the right ammo, I mean, whoa. And this was in a 16 mile an hour wind and that's only a $200 scope on top of the gun. And so I, mine is shooting exceptionally well when you get good ammo. This is with the Barnes Match Ammo. Uh, it did quite well, but I also put in some hunting loads that it did quite well with. So why? Why is it that I'm giving you a pretty good review, I think, of the accuracy versus other, other channels and what they've seen? I think I know why. This, it all has to do with this barrel length in my mind, or at least a lot of it. It's an 18 inch barrel in 6.5 Creedmoor. That is short, very short barrel. 
And when I started looking at data, things that people have put together, I'll note my source here, on the velocities people are getting at different barrel lengths with 6.5 Creedmoor, you see when you get way short, like down at 18 inches, it really depends on the load. You start to see some huge variability, just depending on how hot that powder is, right? Because it's so short at that point. And so it makes a lot of sense to me that they were seeing vertical point of impact shifts um, and some weirdness in the data because it's just so short. Um, in the military arms channel, they also mentioned though that it was shooting a lot better suppressed, and I fully agree, it's shooting a lot better suppressed. That can help with barrel harmonics, but it, it's also giving it at least, you know, 18 feet per second faster uh, on that shorter barrel, just kind of getting a little bit above. My opinion, I love the portability and packability of this gun, but I think 6.5 Creedmoor needs to be 20 inches uh, to really get out of some of that weirdness at this stage. And so I, I do think it's a little short for my personal taste. The other thing to recognize is, I mean, you may be losing, oh, let's call it 120 feet per second on an 18 inch barrel compared to a 24 inch barrel. And so, I mean, that's a pretty significantly downloaded cartridge at that point. That's a significant hit. Now, having said that, working up some hand loads in this thing, we were still able to get, you know, 2680 uh, feet per second out of it, which is fairly normal for 6.5 Creedmoor. So you get the right loads that have a little bit more velocity, you add a suppressor, and suddenly it's a really good match. Now, so what is my opinion of the accuracy of this rifle? I'm actually exceptionally happy with it if you're gonna be hand loading and you can deal with some pickiness and just deal, just find the right loads, or you're willing to try a bunch of different ammo, which is kind of hard to do right now, isn't it? And so if you like to mess around and it takes a little bit, you're willing to do a little bit of work, very accurate rifle, but just do know it is picky. All right, weight, price, and trigger quality. It's only 6.8 pounds. Um, I haven't actually put it on a scale, that's the marketing number, but it feels lighter than that. It's just such a nice, light little gun. Maybe because it's so short, it doesn't feel, you know, heavy on one end. It just feels very light uh, as a gun, even compared to other traditional hunting rifles. It feels lighter being shorter. The price is around $1,600, you know, it, prices are crazy as these are kind of coming into availability. I got mine off Gun Broker um, because, you know, people who have ordered them uh, just aren't seeing them yet. They're, they've been slow to get out there. Now, trigger quality. I love the trigger on this gun. I love it a lot. It's a two-stage trigger and I'm a sucker for a two-stage trigger. Um, I just really like that take up to feel like, okay, I'm on the trigger. And then you know that wall is super light uh, because you've already done some of the take up. Um, you know, for a hunting rifle, ah, I just, my personal preference is always to a two-stage trigger. But that trigger is also what caused trouble for SIG. When this gun was first released, there was a recall after the Nut and Fancy YouTube channel did a very good review showing that they were able to close the bolt and just bump it and, and the gun was going off without pulling the trigger. I'm not talking about like throwing it, I'm saying like bumping the bolt. And so SIG immediately recalled the gun. Um, we don't need to belabor this. All of us are unhappy about seeing that come out. Um, but for me, I was angry when I saw that. I mean, I had already ordered this gun for my son. My 10 year old son is going to be hunting with this gun. And there's no excuse for violating the rules of gun safety. It always needs to be pointed in a safe direction. But that gun is just outright dangerous. You cannot allow that to come out of the factory. And yet with SIG, we saw the 320, the 365, and now the SIG Cross. I'm not your beta tester, SIG. That's, n that's just so unacceptable. I mean, that is how you lose all your customers is making mistakes like that. A uh, very short bolt throw. I like that a lot. And it, boy, it feels Tika-esque to me. Um, it, the feeding, the feeding and the smoothness of the bolt has been perfect for me. Absolutely no issues. Again, I watched on the Military Arms channel and they had to like beat the tar out of their bolt to get that thing out of battery or into battery. And 
Yikes, I mean, it's not their fault. It's clearly Sig's fault, but whoa, mine is not like that at all. Mine is like butter. I mean, it really is as good as a Tika action in my mind. Um, so I, that's unfortunate. Also, they were having issues with their um, AR style uh, safety here that they would flip it and it wouldn't quite go to safe. I've never, nope, I tried it mine like a hundred times. It always flips between them it can't get stuck between it. So that's another issue that they had that mine doesn't exhibit at all. It looks absolutely perfect. So now the question, is this the future of the hunting rifle? Is this the platform that we're going to make a major shift? I mean, if you really think about it, hunting rifles, their basic format has changed very little in the last hundred years. I, they're slight improvements over time, but they're, they're very similar, right? Um, and so this is a pretty major shift from what we would traditionally consider a uh, backcountry hunting rifle. And so the question is, is this it? Is this where we're going? I, yes and no in my mind. Is the Sig Cross the rifle that's going to get us there? I think no. And I think for two reasons. One, Sig's quality control. All I can do is review the gun in front of me. I love this gun. I mean, I'm really thrilled with it. It is so much fun to shoot. It's accurate once we get the right, the right ammo in it. I love the adjustability, how portable and tiny it is. It's perfect suppressed. It's just as long suppressed as a typical hunting rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor unsuppressed. It's beautiful. I just love this gun. I want to take this thing hunting all the time. Very happy with it but I don't think SIG is the company to take us where we need to go because they just haven't done good with quality control. I mean, that recall will kill this gun, right? You can't see that video from nothing fancy and, and suddenly be excited about SIG. Uh, that's, wow. Um, and you see the video from the Military Arms Channel and whoa, their copy of the gun was not good. Uh, you know, beating the bolt into battery and the weird uh, safety thing, that's that's a safety issue right there. If you think it's unsafe, but it's actually not, that's just not okay. You got to fix that. But all I can review is what's in front of me. And I love this gun. I love it. It's a great gun. I would definitely would have bought it again. But there's another reason that I don't know that the Sig Cross is the one to take us into the future. And that's because they really only came out with two cartridges for this gun. And I'm not hearing any noise of new cartridges coming out. I did ask Sig and I heard that there were no plans to come out with new cartridges, at least imminently. Um, I mean, they have the 277 Sig Fury. We'll see if it ever happens. Um, then 308 and 65 Creedmoor. It's just they didn't make enough of an effort to really put this into the market and have it really take off. Um, I know it's new. I know they're still just trying to get them out at all. But when you come out with just two cartridges, both short actions, it just doesn't feel like a serious effort to re really push this forward. It kind of feels like, oh, here's this thing. Try this science experiment. You guys beta test it and we'll move on to the next thing. Um, instead of a serious, dedicated push to put out, you know, a quality checked product that is in final form when it gets to us and in, in enough cartridges for it to really take off. But I will say, I do think 20 years from now, this is what a hunting rifle is going to look like. Uh, it just has too many benefits. It really does. It's very lightweight. The adjustability of the stock, it's so packable for chucking in a pack. Once you shoot suppressed, you don't want to go unsuppressed again. And it's perfect for that. There's just too much to love here in this gun that I do think we're going this direction. I just don't know if this is quite the one to push the industry there, even though I do want to be clear, this gun in front of me is fantastic and I absolutely love this copy of it. I hope when you buy one, you get a good copy too. And then there's one other problem for the Sig Cross. It's the Springfield 2020 Waypoint. It's a pretty similar price point, carbon stock, carbon barrel. Um, I won't say too much about this gun yet because it's the next review to come up on this channel.